In the heartland of Missouri, the tale of Brian Dorsey unfolds, a story that veers into the darkest corners of the human psyche. In the city of Jefferson, Brian Dorsey's life was steeped in desperation, a desperation that would lead him down a path of unimaginable violence. In 2006, Dorsey found himself in a dire financial situation, cornered by two relentless drug dealers. His solution? He turned to his cousin, Sarah Bonney, and her husband, Ben, seeking financial aid. But this was no ordinary plea for help. Instead, it spiraled into a horrifying crime scene. Dorsey, armed with a shotgun, committed an unthinkable act of violence against his own family. The echoes of this chilling crime still resonate today, casting a shadow over Jefferson City. Two years later, in 2008, Dorsey pleaded guilty to the brutal murders. Yet in a surprising twist, he appealed the death sentence, arguing that life imprisonment without parole would be a more fitting punishment. His pleas fell on deaf ears as the Missouri Supreme Court upheld the death sentence in 2010 and again in 2014. Dorsey's attempts to cite mental illness and ineffective legal representation were futile. His appeals were rejected, sealing his fate. The date was set and Dorsey was marked for execution on April 9th, 2024. This tale of desperation, drugs and violence serves as a stark reminder of the impact of our decisions. Brian Dorsey's life, forever marked by the shadow of his actions, is a chilling testament to the human capacity for darkness. His story is not an easy one to digest, but it's an important part of the broader narrative surrounding capital punishment. As we delve deeper into the lives of those on death row, we are confronted with stories of desperation, tragedy and violence. It's a journey that takes us into the heart of the justice system where lives hang in the balance. Despite his pleas for mercy, Dorsey remains marked for the executioner's date with destiny. We move from Missouri to Oklahoma, where Wade Greeley lay awaits his reckoning steeped in tragedy and distorted patriotism. Here, in the heart of America, one man's misguided ideology led him down a path of violence and ultimately to death row. Wade Lay, along with his son Christopher, embarked on a dangerous mission fueled by a warped sense of patriotism. They aimed to rob a bank, not for personal gain, but in a doomed attempt to spark a revolution. Their justification for this act was tied to the tragic events at Waco, Texas, where 80 Branch Davidians lost their lives in a standoff with law enforcement. A tragic event indeed, but one that Lay and his son twisted into a rallying cry for their ill-fated revolution. Their plan went disastrously awry, ending in a shootout that claimed the life of security guard Kenneth Anderson. Despite the tragic outcome, both Lay and his son admitted guilt, but their legal strategies diverged sharply. Wade chose to represent himself in court, a decision that would have far-reaching consequences. His son, on the other hand, received legal representation and was sentenced to life without parole. Meanwhile, Wade's self-representation led to him receiving a death sentence. A drastic outcome, yet one that was perhaps unsurprising given his lack of legal expertise. The wheels of justice, as they often do, turned slowly. Initially slated for execution at an earlier date, logistical challenges faced by the Oklahoma Department of Corrections pushed LAY's execution date to June 6, 2024. Wade Greeley Lay's story is one of tragedy and misguided ideology. A man who, driven by a distorted sense of patriotism, committed an act of violence that cost a life and ultimately led him to death row. His actions, and the twisted justification behind them, have ensured his place in the annals of those awaiting the ultimate penalty. LA's twisted sense of justice has led him to the final corridor, where he awaits the ultimate penalty. As we leave Oklahoma, we continue our journey through the grim landscape of death row, where lives hang in the balance and stories of violence, tragedy and misguided ideology unfold. As we traverse the landscape of death row, we arrive in Ohio, where the complex journey of Timothy J. Hoffner unfolds. Born out of chaos, Hoffner's life was a tumultuous one from the start. Abandoned by his mother, he was raised by step-relatives, a shaky foundation that would come to shape his life in unforeseen ways. The instability of his upbringing would later echo in his actions, the most notorious of which was the brutal murder of Christopher Hammer in 1993. The crime was a shock to the community, a chilling display of violence that would forever scar the memory of those who knew the victim. Hoffner, along with his accomplice, 
was implicated in an act that involved abduction, assault, and the burial of Christopher Hammer. Their motives, rooted in a warped sense of survivalist patriotism, led to an act of brutality that was as heinous as it was shocking. Yet behind this act of violence, there was a man struggling with his demons. Hofner was diagnosed with both antisocial and schizotypal personality disorders, conditions that may have played a role in his descent into crime. These diagnoses, however, were not enough to spare him from the full weight of the law. The legal complexities of his case were manifold. Hofner's attorneys fought tooth and nail, navigating challenges in obtaining execution drugs and dealing with rescheduled dates. Yet the wheels of justice kept turning and Hofner was eventually scheduled for execution on June 18, 2024. As the days count down, the shadow of the gallows looms ever larger over Hofner. His life, a tumultuous journey marked by disorder, violence and an unfathomable act of brutality, now stands on the precipice of its final chapter. Hofner's life, marked by disorder and violence, brings him to the gallows, as the spectre of the execution date looms. As we conclude this journey through the harrowing tales of those facing the ultimate consequence, we are left with a heavy question. The stories of Brian Dorsey, Wade Greeley Lay, and Timothy J. Hofner are marked by desperation, misguided ideology, and tumultuous circumstances. Each case is riddled with complexities, from mental illness and ineffective legal representation to logistical challenges and the struggle to obtain execution drugs. Their heinous crimes are undeniable, yet we cannot ignore the humanity behind the headlines. These are not just stories of violence and tragedy, but also stories of lives irrevocably marked by their actions. The question of justice looms large as we grapple with the death penalty. Is the ultimate consequence a reflection of our desire for justice or simply a manifestation of our collective vengeance? In the shadows of the justice system, lives hang in the balance as individuals face the ultimate consequence for their actions. Until next time, when we delve into more stories from Death Row.